You are entering the championship rounds. Are you booing us? You better not be booing us. We have the fallout from USC Fairfax. Is Chad Mendes now the world's biggest Conor McGregor fan? Is Julia Pena now the biggest threat to Ronda Rousey? And just when we think about GSP coming back, he says, no, you I don't are think so. So all that and much more. This is Hello there, my name is Alex Ramirez, alongside with my co-host, Guillermo Cita, Albert Cita. You guys like my Al Ian Quinton impression at the beginning of the show? I loved it. You nailed it. I'm not going to lie to you. It. I almost thought you were from Jersey. Jersey? Oh, God. <laughs> no. no. It's an like, episode no, of South I, Park I, where the Jersey takes over. Like, no, Jersey. He's going to start wearing some gold jewelry. I liked it because you were uh, you were saying it out of emotion. So <laughs> it makes sense. Well, when you uh, give your heart out. Al I tell you. Don't do not defend Al Ayankita <laughs> just yet. Um, USC Fairfax, <laughs> the Patriots Center last uh, yesterday it was early morning for us because we're in the in the West Coast. Like I think eight o'clock start time with the prelims, right? Yeah, but I didn't wake up until like ten, so, I'll, so I, I'll, right I started start. watching the main card. So we got to see. It's got not, not nice. Got to roll out of bed. See some UFC. It wasn't too bad. Um, main event: Chad Mendes versus Ricardo Lamas, a pivotal bout in the featherweight division to see who maybe have might have another chance to crack uh, uh, Jose Aldo or maybe Conor McGregor. Um, so Chad Mendes proved that he's probably the best featherweight in the world, not named Jose Aldo. Just you guys your thoughts and opinions on uh, Mendes' performance. Well, I don't approve with your your statement because okay. there's still uh, what's gonna call it, Frankie Edgar, and there's still um, Uriah Faber, which they would never face each other. At. Well, I, I would assume Mendes, they, Mendes in favor. Right? Uh, Mendes is in favor, but I think they're he's in the conversation of that three. Then Jose Aldo, and then we'll see what Conor McGregor does to put his name into that hat as well. But uh, I think. This does it for him, and he's going to get the loser out of the championship because I really think Frankie Edgar will get the title shot if, if, if he, he defeats Uriah. Uriah Faber. Which I doubt is going to happen. I, I think uh, Frankie Edgar has gone and went. Uh, I really do think uh, Chad Mendes has the same situation with Uriah Faber, and it sucks because it's with the same fighter, which is Jose Aldo almost, because you know, even though it's Dominic Cruz too for Uriah, Uriah Faber, he has two guys that yeah. he's, always, he's always can't get over the hurdle. Uh, I think Chad Mendes is, is in that thing where like, he can clear. He he himself can clear up the whole division. I think he has, hasn't and, he? Yeah, and, and it just sucks they can't go over that one little hurdle. Even well, though, I, even well, though I think the last fight was very competitive, I I had him winning. Uh, and but, that's what I would say, Chad Mendes over Uriah Faber. If Uriah Faber would win, because I think Chad Mendes fared better in the matchup compared but, to Uriah Faber. I, I again, if Jose Aldo wins, do you want to see another Jose Aldo yes. Uriah Faber? You get me. It, 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 so it's kind of like, do you want to see? Aldo versus Faber again, or Aldo versus Mendez again? Yeah, exactly. Like, what's Aldo going to be? No, so, honestly, so, what I think is if Jose Aldo wins, and uh, and if uh, Chad Money Mendez is still there, he's just going to move up. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. But I think if Frankie Edgar is going to get that title shot, he'll take, even though he already faced that, he'll take that one last time. That's another big money. And then he'll jump at back up to 155. I, I can guarantee you that Chad Mendes isn't going nowhere. He's staying at 145. Oh, Chad Mendes is staying yeah. at 145. But Chad Mendes will be the champion at 145 eventually. Okay. Whether Cho- Jose Aldo's in that division or not, that's a different question. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. But I really do think if Jose Aldo defeats uh, Conor McGregor, he makes the jump to 155. I don't think he, he does any more fights at He has nothing to prove at if, 145 if anymore. And keep in mind, too, that I think if it doesn't turn out well for Henry Brown, even though Henry Brown's not facing TJ Dillashaw anymore, when he eventually does, and let's say he loses... I think that clears the path for him to move up He's to 155 up no because I'm pretty sure uh, Jose Aldo's done with 145 if he can beat Conor McGregor. Okay, so this is uh, kind of wrap up. We got a lot of information there. <laughs> uh, best and worst possible scenarios for Chad Mendes in the featherweight division. Conor McGregor wins. That's the best scenario. Best scenario. Worst scenario. Well, actually, no, no, no. You know, I take it back. Jose Aldo wins. Jose that's, because that's then, the best scenario. For best Chad. scenario for Chad Mendes would be Jose Aldo wins because it clears up the vision for him because. I really think Jose Aldo moves up and it clears the path right perfect to set up either Conor McGregor versus Chad Mendes or Chad Mendes versus Frankie Edgar. And the worst scenario, and is, worst scenario is one, Jose Aldo staying or Conor McGregor uh, winning, which would set up a rematch, would, will extend the wait time for Chad Mendes. Albert, best and worst case scenario. Again, he couldn't for... be 100% wrong. Okay. Uh, well, lay it wor- on us. The worst case scenario is that Frank Yeager wins. Because then, because because we as a fan lose first of all and second of all uh, uh Chad Mendes just has to take on. But a what if he just fights. wins wrestling? No, no. <laughs> all right. In so, okay. the best Continue. case scenario is Frank Yeager loses because either way I think Chad Money's <laughs> getting that that fight 
where, whether it be Jose or, or Conor McGregor. I just though. don't think Frankie Edgar's a big buy compared to Chad Mendes. So it doesn't matter that outcome. It just his, depends his thing how he finishes. Chad money, Mendes, Guillermo. So, money. so the money's there, bro. Like, no, that's <laughs> why. Mendes is a more more of a draw than Frankie Edgar If is. that was true, they wouldn't uh, send him all across the world to, to promote a fight. So. Oh, yeah. Where's, where's, the, where's the favorite? Uh, in uh, in Phil- the Philippines, right? Yeah, the Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember Mark Munoz is on the same card. I know. It's kind of Guillermo is still harping on... Frank Yeager being a contender, like he's been this like for like three yeah, years now, time, right? Man. Yeah, I still think he's there. Who has he lost to besides the champions? Uh, I, I just don't see it, man. Yeah, like, I, I just, I'm, I'm without. I just he don't lost see to it. Benson Henderson. He lost to Jose Aldo. He has he beat everybody I guess, else. I guess you're right, but like I mean, I just can't. I don't. But look, if you look I don't at, see Frank I mean, Yeager in that not, title not, shot. Not to blame him, but look at his re- repertoire. He hasn't really faced. Anybody in the 145 yeah, he division. he beat everybody except for the champions. He, he had to go and fight BJ Penn again, right? He that, fought, you know what? That kind of hurt him. Yeah, yeah. He fought Charles Oliveira. I mean, no no, no, no shot to Charles Oliveira, but he's not in the top 10, right? He fought, what, Clay Guida? I think so. Hold and, on. I'm bringing up Frank Yeager. Yeah, but right what here. I'm trying to say, while Chad Mendes, he literally fought the top of the top in, in that weight class, and he defeated him easily at that. But, it, you know... Frankie Edgar has been people at 155. He was a champion at 155. We're talking about 145. So since losing, I totally understand, but <laughs> it would be an advantage to, tell me, uh, to tell, Frankie tell, Edgar tell that he has a championship well, okay, right, so caliber fighter. Since Listen, losing yeah. uh, three in a row, back to back to Benson Harrison, and he went down to 145, got the Mac title shot to Jose Aldo, lost that one. Uh, he beat Charles Oliveira, BJ Penn, and Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson. Cub, Cub Swanson. Swanson. That's probably the hardest one. But oh, like, okay, so now, now, now we're saying is Cub Swanson was being guaranteed a title yeah, shot had he beat. beat Frankie Edgar. So now the question is for Frankie Edgar is Cub Swanson plus Uriah Faber equal a title shot, right? Yeah. Back to back wins. The, I think maybe, so. I, I, don't I think know. it's a different path than what Chan Mendes is going through, but it's still just as, as a, a, uh, impressive. Oh, you might have to write an article and go more in depth on this <laughs> for fire on MMA.com. Okay. Um, so let's switch to squares to the man who lost the main event, Ricardo Lamas. Um, is he kind of now in that gatekeeper role, you guys think? Yeah. I think he's a gatekeeper for, to get a title shot or to be a, a elite contender at 145. So, it, worst case, best case scenario for what? Ricardo Lamas, he gets a loser of uh, Jose Aldo and Conor McGregor. If Conor no. McGregor loses, you think? That's the Frank Edgar or Chan Mendes. Yeah, you think so? One or the other. Well, I mean, he is an elite 145er, right? Mm-hmm. I think I think a lot of people want to see that Conor McGregor matchup. So don't count him, don't count him out too quickly. Uh, I think if Conor McGregor wins, right? Mm-hmm. And let's say for some reason he beats Chan Mendes, I'm pretty sure he's still right there on the line. Or you could do the whole thing where if Jose Aldo beats Conor McGregor, I think Conor McGregor gets uh, uh, Lamas. He doesn't get anybody else because you know they they, they got that beef going, and I, I wouldn't write him off. Conor just McGregor yet. has beef with everyone. No, yeah, but <laughs> that doesn't but count. But Lamas actually made a video, and he actually uh, was a hit, and oh, yeah. uh, Conor McGregor did, did, did go directly directly uh, 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 said something about it. So yeah. I, I mean, it's there. I mean, it, the 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 story's there. So I, I wouldn't count count out Lamas just yet. I think he'd still be around for uh, at least two more years. Best case scenario, before he, he drops becomes, to one forty five before before he becomes a gatekeeper. He's a pretty big one forty five. Right? Um, all right, so <laughs> okay, jump up to one fifty five. All the featherweights are doing it. I know it seems like a popular yeah, thing to uh, do. So uh, switching gears now to the co-main event. Uh, how classy is Al Iaquinta? I think uh, <laughs> the words he chose were incorrect. Yeah, but. Un- unless you're in a fight or unless you're in a very competitive match, which we saw. He's a Jersey Shore fan. No, it's not Jersey Shore. It's just when you're competing at the highest level. Like and, Frankie and you, Edgar. And you're, you, you know, you're losing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And you rise above it and he you a win. I'm fan too. Oh, my goodness. You guys can bash me all you want. It happened in the World Cup with Zinedine and Zidane. It, when you're on high emotion, sometimes yeah. you don't think as clearly because you're you're riding that that high. He hit butted someone. That was cool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that wasn't disrespectful in any way. And we just saw that Kentucky versus Wisconsin. I mean, when you you're riding that high and then you either fail or you you know just go above and you hear booze from your effort. Of course, you're gonna get. I'm surprised that it doesn't happen more often in the in the octagon because they are in a dog fight pretty much if you think about it. And some of them are, you know, how do I say? They have their heart on their sleeve. Yeah. So I'm surprised that they don't show more emotion during those post interviews. Well, and, all, and I, keeping their uh, composure. I keep did say after, after, after. It's like almost the shirt after the shirt, right? There's a shirt before the shirt. Yeah. So the, the interview after the interview, he said, "Oh well, I was kind of it was in the heat of the moment, right?" Yeah. But I mean, Albert, uh, if when you see a, a man kind of like you know, what is he to the limit? And you see how his real character is, right? Yeah. Was that just his real character? Yeah, that was, that, was, that was his true self. But this is the thing. I, w- I mean, 
Uh, I, I didn't like the way uh, he came out because it kind of seemed kind of like he was crying about it. Yeah. But um, when it comes to stuff like this, I give people more credit if they just embrace it. It made me mad that he went afterwards. And if, went he had, if he would have embraced I, it, you would have been bashing the, the, him even more. This is why I never can get behind John Bone Jones. He plays the fence, bro. <laughs> and I need you to go either full heel or you stay face. This, and, this and is yet, the guy who's been saying John Cena should be a heel for how many years now? He, no, because he the, doesn't <laughs> play the fence, Albert. You know, he needs to go, that's why he needs to go straight heel, bro. He knows the people <laughs> are hating him. But all, all I'm saying is they need to commit to it. And yeah. I get, I'll give him more credit when they commit to it. Yeah, well, we'll see. I think he's been on a four-fight win streak. Yeah. Now, the, obviously, the next slowly little, rising, slowly rising, and maybe if he doesn't break maybe the top whole, ten now. I mean, I, you, you put him in a card in Jersey, you know, people are gonna be going crazy for him. So yeah. maybe a star is, is kind of born now if he embraces the whole Jersey attitude type of thing. So we shall see. I know Chris Weidman's a big fan of it because they all train together. So and then Matt Sarah, obviously Sarah <laughs> Jiu Jitsu at its best. Um, so Juliana Pena returned after uh, wait almost two a year, years, a year, a year, a off. year, and like a good chunk of months. Uh, she dominated in her bout. Uh, but kind of what kind of bugged me was leading up to her fight, and after even after it, uh, Ronda Rousey kept getting brought up. And my question to you guys is: just is any woman on the one thirty five division who's like a two fight win streak, three fight win streak, is now automatically seem like a threat to Ronda Rousey? Well, Do you guys I, get that vibe from any? From yeah, me? I just think because uh, Ronda Rousey is like demolishing the division, yeah. it's just let's bring a new fresh face that uh, Ronda Rousey hasn't faced. Who's yeah. on? Who's the hottest person right now? And they don't get enough time yeah. uh, to accumulate three, four, five win streak. It's one, two, and then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's on fire right yeah. now. I oh. think when it comes to this women's division, they're really just trying to make contenders because it, it really isn't that fair. Mm. But my, my only problem is, is that I hate that they start talking about them before we see the actual performance, because when it comes to Ronda Rousey, we should only be talking like this if the person did like a five second KO or you know choke yeah. someone out in a fantastic you know so, so, something spectacular. And um, even though I know Jessica Pena took that long, Julia Pena, uh, sorry, Julia Pena took that long um, break, I still don't, I, even though her performance was. She's it, a great well, fighter. Well, yeah. She's an ultimate she fighter great. winner. Yeah. I don't think it was to that level of Ronda Rousey, so I don't think it should be in the same conversation. Just like, yet. yeah, because like Kat Zingano, I think did more uh, that year building up to to her fight, yeah. than than any other girl as far as uh, uh, the way she performed in the octagon, and that's why I thought she was well deserved to be brought up as far as you know. Oh yeah, this is going to be Ronda Rousey's. Uh, a test, but yeah. when it comes to these other girls, I think you need to see a little bit more yeah. in the actual octagon. Yeah, it, I totally yeah. agree because if you think about it, Misha Tate has a more impressive. Uh, yeah. It just seems to me like the the, the media is kind of gra- grasping at straws right now, just to find anybody, exactly in, that's uh, how. everybody, anybody in the division who is going to be. Well, this person could be a, could be a threat yeah. to run around. Any girl so. that wins one fight, all of a sudden they want to start throwing the name out there. Yeah. So uh, other highlights from the card. I know uh, Dustin Poirier returned yeah. back to uh, lightweight. I, I thought he was impressive. Uh, he even talked about it a little bit. Less weight cut for him, yeah. more natural weight, uh, and he looked but he looked crisp. Yeah. I mean, from a guy that's never been knocked out, from what I heard from Brian Stan, uh, I thought it was pretty impressive what he did to him. Yeah. The only thing that concerned me about it was the uh, the other fighter looked a lot bigger mm. than than Dustin Poirier, and we saw that thing with Benson Harrison where he said, "Oh, I do a big weight cut," but yeah, but then when you see him in the uh, in <laughs> yeah. above weight. You can see why they have to cut down to yeah. a smaller weight class. What I thought was interesting too is after uh, Chad Mendes defeated uh, Ricardo Lamas, the official UFC Twitter account said uh, Chad Mendes now ties a record with Dustin Poirier for more finishes in the featherweight division. And they were talking last week. Is this guy? Is this a premature move to the? I mean, yeah, to the lightweight I, I, division. I think it was premature, but I like. But if he still continues, though. but if he still continues, I, I, we'll see. Now that he, you know, we'll see a bigger 155ers if he can and, compete with them. And I don't mind fighters going back to forth for 155, 145 as long as their body can take it. And I think, in a way, it's a good break. It, it, it should be a good, like, in-between. Like, let's say a Desperate can't fight a top five, top ten featherweight. Then why, why not fight someone at 155 that, that that's open uh, uh, in fighting him? Because I, I feel it keeps them active. If they win, it brings their profile just that much bigger. Just like Benson Harrison. I think he's still dedicated at, at 155. Yeah, but if it's but, there... But if it's there, why not take it? My, my other concern is what we saw. The, Spe- saw sp- especially since he already got eliminated from the towel con- contention, supposedly. We saw the concern with uh, Hen and Burrell cutting weight and oh, how yeah. dangerous it could be. So sometimes, like Albert said, it's, a break is good. But I still think uh, people don't pay too much attention to this, but they should. Uh, dro- dropping so Some, much weight. Yeah. That's so actually true. Yeah, yeah. I would want to see some medical research behind that. Uh, so I want to uh, Clay Guida. Oh, yeah. Clay Guida. <laughs> 
time to go up to 155. I say <laughs> Dos Anjos is I'm there waiting sure for him. I'm sure he read our article because yeah. he said word from word what we were saying. Go to fireoutmma.com, read the article, Guillermo Real. I think we'll probably post it again so we can get to be yeah. sent it out there. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll do a little update yeah. saying uh, post fight comments and how Clay right. Guida did last or yesterday yeah. uh, just to see uh, if he does return to 155. And he, he did defeat Anthony Pettis and uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, so we shall see. Also, um, Gray Maynard. Uh, retirement, yeah. sorry. But five in a row now or four in a row? Oh, yeah. He's pushing his mid-30s. Didn't look very good at all. I mean... Uh, ever since the, the Frank Yeager... Um, it's all been downhill, fight, it's been after, downhill after that. Yeah. I mean, I think we've seen the best out of Gray Manor. I think it's time to hang him up. Yep. So, I mean, he had the good t- t- two-year run with uh, yeah. Frank Yeager. I really, I really do think this was, this was it. Part, part one of the best trilogies of all time, right? You think, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. But, I mean, it's, yeah. now it's to a point where he's losing to guys we don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, people that have losing streaks, too. I mean, the guy he lost to... Had a couple losses straight under yeah. his belt. So too. when you're when you're when you're put into fights where both guys have lost multiple fights coming into it, you know you're in a bad spot in the UFC, right? Yeah. So uh, the, said, the, these fights should be ones he should be winning if he's at the top of his game. Yeah, I think that's it for the UFC Fairfax Fallout. Anything else you want to talk about now? Ireland Keith again? No. Uh, just no. Albert's no. Uh, Liz Carmouche on the winning side. Oh yeah, yeah she got, she got, got a w. Good to see her win again. Uh, that's it for this segment. Please stick around, though. I want to talk about a little bit about the heartbreak of Alexander Gustafson, the possible return of George St. Pierre, uh, Ronda Rousey, and is Machito playing mind games, guys? Stick around. Please visit 5roundmma.com on our social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 5roundmma.com. All right, welcome. Thank you for sticking around. Um, this is kind of same. I want to talk about the news and notes. Uh, this this segment, uh, this uh, story came out on April Fool's. So I don't know if it's April Fool's story by Luke Rockhold, who's you know pretty funny guy, I think, mm-hmm. pretty outgoing. He uh put a picture on Instagram saying he got a, a, a Black House MMA T-shirt and tagged Ed Sources. Oh, thanks for the gift. I, I ran out of TP. So people were speculating maybe it was it a Black House trying to play mind games with. Um, Rock Hold, or was it Rock Hold trying to play mind games with Machida? And then so we have in house a re- uh, resident Machida expert. Albert, does Machida even play mind games? Well, th- this is what you guys don't understand. The mind game started a long time ago okay, with Machida. When the fight was announced. Uh, <laughs> if you follow him on Instagram, he puts a little in- a little mind games in there as well. Right, okay, uh, example, you just please. you just need a, I, again. I can't. I don't want to give out his game plan, but um, I from what I heard and from inside sources is uh, Ed Swords did send that out oh, to uh, oh, wow. Luke Rockhold, and uh, it was Ed Swords trying to do an April Fool's joke on uh, Luke Rockhold. But it's funny because um, there is a nice little clip out there. If you go and look it up, uh, 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 Cain Velasquez as actually uh, imitating Machida while he's sparring with uh, Luke Rockhold. Oh, what? It's pretty interesting. I love this you stuff. Should go, you should go check it out. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? Just my rebuttal is: uh, is it Ed Soros or Bla- Machida? Because it sounds like it's Black House. It, it sounds like uh, <laughs> they are one of the same. <laughs> They're one of no, the same. No, they are not. I'm, I'm like, like, oh, and, and if, while we're still on the topic, I'm gonna let off. There's also an interesting clip to Machida. He's uh has his hands you know behind his back and he's having people kick his stomach over and over. The- uh, again, what? these are the mind games I talk about. <laughs> Those are not mind games. That's Those are dangerous. training. <laughs> no, preparing for the kicks Luke- from Luke Rockhold. What, what, what exactly? What is Luke? That's Ruffle not mind portion? games. <laughs> it is properly if training. Showing, if you're showing Luke How- Rockhold, I could take any kick, son. Is it like? When a fighter does social media, right? Isn't it great? Don't you yeah. just love it when like a fighter just like posts like cool I don't know. stuff? Like, Albert and... says all these machita, but yeah. Oh, but it's in general, like which is like, like oh yeah, of yeah. course it makes it a more interesting fight, well, especially but... when they do it right. I mean, yeah. some some fighters are kind of boring on social media, but some of them are just like, great. Like this, I and love so, this. I love some, this stuff. Man. I love some, this stuff. And someone photoshopped an awesome picture. It has um machita as Ryu and Luke Rockwood as Ken. And they're like facing <laughs> off. It's Super freaking awesome. awesome. But again, uh, it's not Machida. So yeah. I think Machida's it, actually yeah. pretty boring on Instagram. So <laughs> no, he's not, man. I just told you right show. He was he was posting people kick him in the stomach. One that's entertaining. The other thing was Ed Soros, and now you're talking about a fan doing uh photoshopping. He also showed him uh clean up his front yard, his wife made him do it. You see? <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? That's the stuff you get that's, from Machida. That, that's the stuff behind the fight, right? It's yeah. not fighting twenty four hours. 24 Don't believe the hype from Albert, he's just a big <laughs> Machida it. fan. Believe it. <laughs> So another story I want to go to on 5 round MMA.com. You can check out 5 round MMA.com to see all these stories. Um, Ronda Rousey's manager has no idea how to promote anything. Uh, he was on UFC Tonight last week saying, and they asked him about the whole WrestleMania thing and if, and if uh, she's going to be uh, appearing anytime soon. He just said, nope, it was a one-off. I was like, come on, guy. You never heard of kayfabe? A little wink to the camera maybe saying, well, maybe she will return. Maybe she won't. Nope, straight up, nope, nope. She got Fast and Furious 5 coming up. So you, you guys kind of bored by that reaction? 
I mean, because even her Twitter account said, oh, you know, me and The Rock, we're just getting started. And The Rock said, oh, yeah, we're just getting started, too. So, like... Well, that, that's how you promote. I mean... You, exactly. You but send, imagine you, a horrible job. You, you send out teasers. I mean, that I guess, you, to your point, yeah, it was not a tease whatsoever. Uh, it doesn't get anybody talking, and that's kind of what you want. So... This brings me back that I, I think they borrow from each other. Mm. And this is a good example when someone tries to ignore... The wrestling entertainment uh, uh, aspect of it, okay. and this is what makes me mad. You know why Brock Lesnar still has one of the highest pay per view buys? Because he goes out there and sells it, son. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to tell you. That some of these people will need to quit pushing WWE away. I don't think away. he sold anything. And, I think you really hated it, Frank Mir. It, 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 <laughs> and really start embracing it. I mean, I think I think this was a, a a good opportunity to just really let it out there. You know what I'm saying? And who cares if, if she wrestles or not? Yeah. Let Let me think. That she's gonna step into the ring. Exactly. If she doesn't, oh well. But more, guess what? More I thought brand about awareness. it. Yeah. I thought it's about like, it. Like, what if like uh, Ron Rose like Paul Heyman as her manager? Like even exactly. back in the day, like Jimmy Hart yeah, or yeah, Bobby the Brain exactly. Heyman. They would have teased it. Uh-huh. No, no. Well, according to contract, she's uh, not obligated anymore to be a part of the. That would be awesome. Like, come Paul on Heyman. now. Yeah. Kayfabe guys, if, if, if you Ronda like, Rose. Uh, yeah, kayfabe is a wrestling term that's kind of like. Keep the storyline going, right? Kind Ma- of like. Imagine that Paul Hammond with Ronda Rousey and Brock Lesnar in the same corner. Oh, wow. <laughs> My mind is blown already. Wow. <laughs> but uh, again, there is a... Uh, she's busy right now, but uh, again, WrestleMania 32. Can't wait for Entourage. Uh, WrestleMania 32 <laughs> is a year away, so you never know what could happen. See, that's how you promote Be careful, something. Turtle. Be careful. She's deadly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another story kind of near and dear to my heart. GSP was one of my favorite fighters, and he kind of you know called it quits. Not called it quits. He said, yeah, I'm going to walk away for a little bit. No, he busted uh, a stone cold. You know it. He didn't <laughs> want to put anybody else over, so he grabbed his ball and left. <laughs> so he was at a press conference in uh, Quebec or Montreal or one of those places, and they asked him about- Canada. Yeah, and he was in Canada, and they asked him about maybe coming back, returning. He's like, well, I still train every day. I got bruises on my body. It's so hard I'm training. So I'm training Warrior Mac, he says. And they asked him, oh, so you Coming back, he's like, well, I'm not coming back, but I'm not think I'm thinking about it, but I'm not not thinking about it. So I may return, I may not return. Uh, just so you guys, the chances of GSP ever returning again? Uh, zero percent. I think uh, he has his mind made up physically. I think he's done. Yeah, but uh, not physically. Come on, he's still well, training. Come on, on, bro. I think physically he's taking a toll. I guess you could yeah. say. Uh, he's just a lot of miles on him. Uh, the other thing is mentally, he's not there. And if you're not there mentally, you can't perform to your uh highest standards he meant if he's not there if he's already on the on the fence he's not mentally there dude well here's a quote i train i keep myself in shape i have marks my body because my body bruises easily and i'm training hard it doesn't mean i'm coming back but it doesn't mean i'm not coming back i'm thinking about it let me tell you what's up here end quote look i'm gonna give a gsp a five percent chance that he'll come back and i'll tell you why because there's a five percent chance five percent chance he doesn't come back (laughs) no 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 let me let me tell you half four half empty let me tell you because there's a five percent chance of warrior mac might lose against robbie lawler Uh, that's all i'm getting robbie lawler uh, a a percentage to win so the only way gsp comes back is if warrior mac loses that talent shot which i highly doubt it it's you know 95 percent it's written in the stars the minds predicted it, so that's the, the only way. Roy so if, if for some <laughs> the minds crazy, predicted many things uh, yeah, that were incorrect. Around, so so, so if, if if some crazy thing were to happen, where he loses, I think GSP comes back. Uh, yeah. Mock my words, but I bet you it's true. Well, they also uh, if Roy uh, Mac wins, sorry GSP, he's gone for life. They also asked him because you know, obviously GSP has been a big uh, uh, delegate for the stringent UFC drug test, and they asked him about that. And about the changes they're they're supposed to be doing, and he quote he says, uh, "So far, it's nothing. It's been nothing. It's been some nice words, but nothing's been done. As long as they do nothing, I sure I won't come back. So that whole drug yeah. testing thing might come back. So, but who knows? I think July is a new drug testing program, right? So we'll see. If the, the, the longer he, the more time he's off, the more less chance I give him coming back. The game gets away from him, right? Yes. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, I mean, we still got one more year, and then uh, final one. This kind of this story kind of like tugged at my heartstrings a little bit because. You guys remember when uh, Alexander Gustafsson lost to yes. Anthony Johnson in his home set, homeland of Sweden, 30,000 people in a soccer arena, yep. cheering for him. He get knocked down. You see how crushed he was afterwards. And uh, according to an interview he did with the Swedish magazine, uh, Gustafsson said he was nearly this pretty close to quitting after that fight. Um, to see quote here, he said, um, yeah, they thought about quitting. He said, I was definitely been my worst difficult time in life in period so far. I was completely serious about quitting MMA. I don't really, I don't really care about the title. It was just happened in front of my home crowd. My cousins, cousins were in the place. I just took it too hard. I didn't have all, I didn't have the will to continue. I was really close to quitting, but I have received so much love from the fans, loved ones, and my team. So, just your thoughts about that? I mean, like, you know, it it sucks whenever you have to perform in front of family members and people that care about you, and not 
uh, coming away with the victory or, or, you know, with the good performance. And I, I totally understand with Gustafson. It just makes you like the guy even more. Yeah. Uh, hoping that he comes back. But just so Gustafson know, he has support from not only Sweden, the whole world now. I yeah. mean, er, er, everything he's done is really impressive. Uh, take take a listen here, John Bone Jones. When you keep it real, bro, <laughs> when you ain't fake, yeah. uh, people get behind you. And I really, that is what I really think. I mean, Alexander Summers just keeping it real, man. Who wouldn't feel that 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 type of, of feeling uh, in front of your home crowd and everything? Uh, I think that's why a lot of people want to get more behind him now. If anything, I think he grew more fans from admitting that instead of trying to play the tough guy image. And yeah. um, he, I, I like it. I mean, uh, it was a real remark and it was a real emotion. And um, I now I wish I I can't wait to see him back in the octagon and and uh, win. So yeah, he'll return June twentieth against Glover to share in Berlin. So they're kind of keeping him in Europe in the Ooh. European feel. Um, even at, I think Justin too. Every after the fight, he's he's a, I do feel bad for him, but you yeah. know he was real, a true sportsman in his uh, post fight uh, win. But yeah, it's kind of like oh man, kind of heartbreak. Like oh this guy, like, I just felt for him. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully he could return back. I mean. I'm not really a big Glover to Sheriff fan, but <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. I think that's it for news and notes. If you guys want to part ways with anything you want to talk about, that I missed that I miss a topic that we guys maybe wanted to discuss. Mm-hmm. Something grinding your gears. No. Nope. I think we're good. Spectrum Vita. Oh yeah. Um, we're also partnered up with SpectrumVita.com, guys. It's a great uh sports entertainment lifestyle, whatever we want, kind of a website. The, the show is also featured in there. We have articles that kind of cross cross-reference each other, uh, pro wrestling, MMA, sports-related, food and travel. Uh, and also, if you want to contribute to it, just email uh, email us or leave a comment below. We're all looking for contributors of all types, of all viewpoints. So that'd be kind of great to do that. And is that it for today? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I want to thank all of our sponsors. Uh, first, by Rock and Green Eco-Friendly Eco-Friendly, Eco-Friendly Cleaning Products, uh, the Five Rounds Clothing Line, which camera is sporting here. And, of course, the RMA Foundation, Redemption Martial Arts. And please visit us at 5RoundMMA.com, SpectrumVita.com. Follow us on Twitter and, and Instagram at 5RoundMMA. That's F-I-V-E. And like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Podomatic. Yeah. Albert, take us away. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank everybody for listening. And I, want, like- I want to point out, too, that who's back in the house? Oh, Stephen Ross. If you're wondering why we actually sound, like, perfect, I mean, I know, I know, we've been going back and forth with the sound. Uh, Steven Rosal's finally back with Rosal Records. Our mics not falling all over each yeah, other. Yeah, no. you know, I'm not holding on to one my of mic is like cut out in the middle of the show. So yeah, if you're wondering, it's because uh, Rosal's back. Steven Rosal, uh, Rosal Records. And so, if you want to sound just as good as us, go check him out on his website. Yeah, was it SteenRosalRecords.com? That's where we can find you. He also has Instagram well. too. He puts a lot of cool stuff. So uh, go ahead and follow him. Uh, our en- engineer, their big game. Or right, Zach Bruce here in Mosita, uh, and thanks everybody for listening. Oh yeah, the cream of the-